All right. So today I am going to show you guys how to put in an apocalyptic scene, sky and nuclear bomb into a picture and not just any picture. Today I'm going to use um, a very bad quality cell phone picture. This is just to prove that you can do amazing things with really bad pictures. So let's just get, jump right in. All right, so you can instantly see this is a pretty bad picture. The colors are glum. The resolution's just awful. There's a lot of distractions. There's just tree branches, antennas, tree branches, more of them. Houses, terrain, and birds in the background. And you're probably wondering, I can't put in a nuclear bomb in a sky without it looking pretty bad. But believe it or not, if you know how to approach the thing using refine edge tool, and basic knowledge, you can do this and make it look outstanding. Now I'm going to put links of the pictures, you can download them in the description and you can follow along with me, try this out yourself and see how well you do. Maybe you can even make it look cooler than I did. So let's just start. First we need to get rid of some distractions. I'm going to get rid of these branches here. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Just select this branch here, right click, fill. I'm going to make sure the use is on content aware. That way it's going to fill in using the sky around the selection. It's going to do the work for us. Looks great. Let's just select this other branch here. Do the same thing. And I'm just going to get one of the get rid of this antenna here. Great. You're probably thinking I should get rid of these birds here, but for an apocalyptic scene, I actually prefer to keep the birds in there. Birds flying away from a scene, they, they just add that much more oomph to the picture. So I'm going to keep those in there and still make it look fantastic. All right, now you can press Control J. Copy the layer. We're going to keep this back on layer so we can compare and contrast our results toward the end. Layer one. Now first, let's just get the hard part over with. We are going to separate this kind of horizontal line following the top of the roofs, the branches, the antennas and separate it from the picture so we can put our clouds and nuclear bomb behind it. We don't have to erase anything. So we're just going to get the quick selection tool and let's just select our horizon here. And I mean everything Let's select our birds too, make sure those guys are in there. And we need our tree branches. Looks like we got everything we needed selected. So now we're going to go to Refine Edge. And you're probably thinking that is an awful selection. Well, we're going to use Refine Edge and it's going to isolate our selection. What it's going to do is it's going to recognize that this isn't the sky and everything else is the sky and it's going to erase everything that is the sky and not. What I mean is, let's just say, let's just draw around the tree branches here. See how it isolates just the branches and leaves the birds and takes up the sky. That means we could put this picture in front of anything and they'll still have the branches and birds. This has quickly become my favorite tool in Photoshop. So let's just only paint over the edges. Sorry if my computer's slow. I'm running like 16,000 things at once. Gotta select the rest of these branches here. Can't forget these guys. Okay, and I want my roof here, so hold Alt. We're going to undo that. I like my roof. Okay, everything here is selected. We're going to press OK. 
we're going to press control J, copy that layer. We're just going to name this layer top layer. All right, hard parts over. Now we're going to go to our clouds. Um, any cloud, I guess, ominous clouds work. I just Google image this one, not too sure where it is. Again, the links to the images are in the description. You can download them and try this out with me or try it out for yourself. So we're just going to crop this. Let's just get this bottom section out. This is all we need. Control A, Control C. Let's go to our original. Control V. Control T, and we're going to mess with its parameters here. Now, the good thing about cloud pictures and sky pictures is they're probably the most resilient and editable images you can find. You can you can mash them, squeeze them, and anything, and they still look great. And they'll they'll last a while. And you can add as much effects to these clouds as you want and still get away with whatever you need. Alright, and we're going to put the opacity to about 60. Let's just put this under top layer. Opacity back up. See, this is why we did the top layer. Everything looks great. We have all the tree branches still. And that's just fantastic. Now we need to get the boring part done with. What we have here in the background, everything's too light. You can obviously see that. And it just doesn't look realistic. I guess from a distance it looks nice, but it just it just doesn't match up. The green skies and the gray ground and the white trees. So what we need to do, select this top layer here. We're gonna go to our burn tool. Right click here, burn. We're gonna go to highlights. And basically, we're just going to burn every layer of this. Just get everything in here, especially the tree branches. Those need to be black. Now, once the highlights are done, you're going to go to midtones. Let's just burn those again. Might as well as get the school here. Okay, now we're going to go to shadows, and this is where the details really pop up. Good things with burning and shadows is that, come on, you can actually add detail to things that's lost their edge. Let me see. See how the trees just pop back into life there? We're just going to go back over this again. Don't worry, we're going to fix this line here. Let's go over the parts that need detail. Let's put the exposure 16, this should be good. Got to get our birds in here. Now you're probably thinking, why is it all pitch black? Well, it's a nuclear bomb picture. Um, the nuclear bomb is going to be behind the school, and you just got to think how the lighting is going to look. Everything else behind the nuclear bomb is going to be black, because of that's just how our sight works and cameras work. So basically, only here to here in this man standing here is going to get the light of the nuclear bomb. Everything else is going to be whited out. Plus, you know, it just it just looks cool. I mean, I think we can all agree with that. Right now, now let's fix this like cut off edge here. We're gonna go to layer one down here. We're gonna go back to our highlights. I guess just do the same thing we did. Slowly go from highlights to mid notes to shadows. Shadows. There, now the lines are blurred. I hate that song. Maybe... Yeah, that's it.
All right, well, that's fixed. Now, let's add in the nuclear bomb. Again, I just got this from Google Images. Again, links are in the description. So now we're going to go refine edge of this again. Let's get our quick selection tool. Let's just select the entire bomb here. Yep, everything. Okay, now we're going to go to Refine Edge. Let's just bump this up. And let's just select around the nuclear bomb. It's going to look crappy, but believe me, believe it or not, it's going to look really good once the final composition's over. Okay, now we're going to press OK. Control C and control V. Let's just drag this under the top layer. Alright. And press control T. Let's just rotate this as needed. Okay, great. Now let's we got some problems to fix here. There's some holes in our nuclear bomb. We need to fix that. So let's control Z. Right now we got our original selection, the sharp one. Let's control C, let's control V that. And basically we're just gonna drag this over our top here. Like that. And we're just filling in the holes there, as you can see. If you got a lot of fans or love attention to detail, they're gonna go crazy over that one. So let's just erase this layer we just smacked on top here and leave only this bottom layer here. And while we're at it, let's delete this kind of halo around the bomb here. Because that's going to show up and then that's going to be ugly. Okay. Now the two chunks of bombs here, we're going to merge it down. Now they're all one photo. Looks like it's in there. All right. We are almost done. Last thing we need to do is let's add some contrast to the bottom original image here. So with the top layer, we're going to press brightness and contrast. Let's just make it a little darker, about negative 15. And let's just bump the contrast to 45. Now, you see if I bring this down to this top layer here, merge down, it only affects this middle layer here. So control Z, and we're going to control J. And we're going to bring this second contrast layer here to our very original image here. And we're going to merge on both pictures. Now it's equal. All right, I think we have two things left to do. We are done with all the high-tech putting together assembly here. So a top layer in layer one, hold shift and click layer one, right click and merge layers. Now we are gonna go to color lookup. Technically we're done. You could finish here. I don't think it's done yet. I'm gonna put a cheap layer from the color lookup over here and it's just pretty much gonna bring every all the image together. So let's select something that makes it look a little little cool. It'll bring the picture together. I like this, but it's a little too blown out for me. I really like that. But that's not bad either. I think I'm going to go over to candle light. Before you merge that, go to your top layer, filter, render. We can't forget the lens flare. Right? Let's just Move this on top of our bomb. That should be big enough, 125. All right, merge it down. Now let's see what we've come up with so far. From this crappy cell phone picture, horrible resolution, to this great looking apocalyptic scene. It actually looks pretty realistic, believe it or not. So I hope you guys learned 
some basic techniques on how to work with bad photos. So thanks for watching.